Hi. Hey, welcome back to Jason Unleashed. I'm your host, Jason Carter. Good to see you. Thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Monday. It's a brand new week. Uh, July is almost over. Where has 2020 gone? I don't know. I'm still trying to find it. But what I did find for you guys today is a great show because my guest is author, writer, producer, uh, mother, Robin Ayers. She's incredible. This girl's written two books. Um, hi, Courtney Tesno. Uh, and she's dope. She's amazing. You've seen her on Fox. You've seen her on OWN. You've seen her on BET. And she's here. She's doing her thing. She is a jack of all trades, and she's going to be in in just a few. Hey, Kai. Uh, you guys are the drill. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Hit me below in the questions box. I'll leave your comments. And let's go ahead and bring Robin in. I'm a little low energy today. I don't know what's wrong with me. I've had like four cups of coffee. I don't know what's happening. Um, but nonetheless, let's go live with Robin. Robin, Robin, I'm like I'm popping and locking. Bam, bam, bam. You like that? <laughs> What's up, Jason? Robin, hi. Welcome to Jason Unleashed. How you doing? Thank you. I am absolutely wonderful, and I I loved your intro. I could have just sat back and listened to you. You know, you're you're just amazing, Jason. Oh, thank you, thank you. I had to give you your flowers because you are incredible. You're sub. Good to see you. Good to have you. Thank how you. are you doing? Uh, quarantine screwed us all over. How how how's it shaking out for you? You know, what? it it actually depends on how you look at it. Um, True. I yeah, I feel like quarantine. I mean, you know, we have our ups and our downs. Really, I mean, it. I felt like it screwed me over initially. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, you know what, let me make something out of this. And so um, I just I just changed my mindset. And I was like, you know what, let me let this work for me. So I'm, I'm doing okay in quarantine right now. I'm doing all right. I feel that and it's working for you. Let's talk about your podcast. Let's just get into it because you are booked and busy and busy, busy, busy. <laughs> Text, sex, in checks yeah <laughs> okay first that that title robin is everything but you came out the gate march i think march 29th was your first post this podcast you're talking about everything you said you're making quarantine work for you tell us about this podcast and why it is so amazingly special uh the podcast is super dope um thank you very much for that the the title is is all encompassing of everything that i wanted it to be i i felt like this i was like you know what is there anybody who's talking about the stuff that we discuss with our friends? Like, you know, how? can yeah. you hear me okay, by the way? Yeah. I just want to make sure you can. Okay. People who, uh, you know, I wish that my friends could, could uh, I wish that people could be a, a fly on the wall to the conversations that I have with mm -hmm. some of my friends. And I said, we have these conversations via text, via DM. Like, we, we, we talk about getting checks. We talk about relationships. We talk about it all. So I was just like, you know what? Uh, let's just talk about all things on this podcast. So that's, that's where the idea came from. And it's wonderful because it's like this space for women. And, you know, that's part of, you know, you empower women. Um, that's, you know, you, you have built a brand and you have a following of just women who look to you for guidance, uh, motivation, positivity is a mantra that you, you stand by. So you have this podcast when someone goes to listen to text, sex and checks, I'm gonna keep saying the title cause it's dope. <laughs> um, it's like, what, what, what do you hope they walk away with? I hope they walk away feeling that, you know what, that's relatable. Mm -hmm. This is a place that I could go to to where somebody is talking about my exact feelings, something, and maybe you can get something from it because at the end of the day, that is what I'm about. I'm about helping people in some way, shape, or form. And even if it's like a little bit skewed with some of these topics that we're talking about, <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, I still want you to get something from it. So I hope people sure. feel uplifted and empowered and like, you know what, I'm not the only one going through something like mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Uh, we have some we have some controversial topics sometimes, and that's cool too. I love that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, that's that's what I hope people walk away from from the uh, the the podcast with. I think controversy controversy is is inevitable and unavoidable, but also like you know some of the most enlightening conclusions come from controversial conversations when you have those really uncomfortable conversations about anything be it sex or um race or just mm -hmm. anything that people religion politics people shy away from those things rightfully so because people have strong views yeah. on that i mean i mean of course look in 2020 in the last 90 days we've seen something happen in 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 our culture that we've that in our lifetime we haven't seen before ever and that civil unrest blatant racism just outside of your front door and we have no choice but to talk about it and those conversations on and off the podcast what do you find what are you finding out from from your fellow brothers and sisters the the temperature of how they're feeling with everything that's going on people are pissed 
I mean, we see it and, and it is, it's very uncomfortable. We're in a time that is, like you said, we've not seen it before mm -hmm. um, in my lifetime for sure. So it's, it's very unfamiliar, but what I'm enjoying is seeing people take the forefront. People mm -hmm. are standing up and people are going out and they're doing whatever they need to do in order to make buzz, make a noise, and then therefore make a change. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, definitely uh, is something that I'm coming across very often because uh, as you know, I'm writing for the Jasmine brand as well. And so, uh, th those, I mean, we're talking about it. We're talking about how obviously there's a lot of black culture and right. entertainment and people who are blending in with the civil unrest that's going on right now. But now more than ever, I feel like I'm more educated because I have to be in it. I have to see it. I have to write about it. Um, so yeah, that, that's the climate of, of what's going on. We're, you know, and I love that. We're just seeing people who are taking the forefront and I'm sort of, I find myself like in the middle of it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, like, you know, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to go for as well um but then I, I i'm also not afraid to be a follower in the sense of like you know really uh taking heed to people who are leading and know what yeah. they're talking about and things like that so yeah i think i think it, that's I, that's a great point because I, I like yourself robin it's you know we, our blackness is so different we, we, we yes we are african-american we are black but we're but we're not a monolith we don't move through the world the same right i'm a gay black male i absolutely don't move to the same world I move to the world the same way as a black female mm -hmm. but taking a back seat and listening is also so crucial to our survival because yeah we're pissed we're heated we're hot we want to get out there on the front lines but if we sometimes we have to get that ammo which could be knowledge yeah. education um the verbal mastery to go out and fight those battles because sometimes it's not about a, it's not a physical thing it's about as we said a conversation you may have with someone that could change the way they think about something or or an ideal you thought was one way and come to find out whoa i was completely wrong mm -hmm. thus elevating your consciousness as to what's going on because it's it's everywhere you can't escape it and i think yeah. that you know you have to go through it and going through it the the best way possible is being educated on all fronts. So I feel you on that. You motivate people, Robin. Two books. You are an author. <laughs> 2016's Unspoken Language, Confidence, uh, Positivity, Empowerment. Then you pivot and you hit us in 2019 with the RA report, mm -hmm. you know, the nuggets for the budding business entre entre entrepreneur. I mean, you have been able to blend so many cool things into this one amazing brand. Take us through the genesis of becoming Robin Ayers, the brand, because you've done a lot and you've touched a lot and you've inspired a lot of people. Oh, well, thank you again, Jason. And clearly you have done your homework. You are awesome. You drop in, you drop in years and, 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 you know, dates and facts and stuff. I'm like, okay, I'll, you get up on my game, Jason. You know, I'm a journalist. That's what we do. That Look, I'm outside in nature. I thought I might as well give you the best interview possible, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I really of do. Um, but absolutely. Um, well, basically how this all started was um, people, what I love is that people have uh, watched me and my journey from mm -hmm. be deciding to become a host, right. you know, and getting into broadcast journalism. They, they, they saw that and that in and of itself is empowering. And what I wanted people to understand is that my, my life has literally come about from the power of belief. I've used yeah. my power of belief. And all belief really is, we, we're all born with it, but all it really is, is a superpower that we've all been born with and learning how to tap into that to turn your life into what you want it to be. Period, right. point blank, hands down, that's just what it is. Period. I, I, period. Because, and look, you're preaching the gospel right now. Also, well, let's say what's up to some people real quick. Hi, Felicia. Hey, Tony. Everyone, everyone, let's wave. Um, Robin, yeah. you're killing it right now with the sermon because I feel like especially in this industry, we struggle so hard to have faith that it's going to work out in whatever capacity working out is or whatever that means for people, right? Like, you know, we want to, as a host, we want to book that, get that contractual job. We want to be on those amazing platforms. Like you yourself have been on Fox, BET, OWN. You've been able to step onto those amazing places that are so heralded in the Black community, especially. And so, but faith is so hard to build when you're constantly faced with things that test your faith, I guess, mm -hmm. like rejection. Um, so, you know, they say that no ans no response is a response. The lack of uh, return of email. So many things yes. that go into being talented. Hey, girl, you yes. feel me? Yep. You feel me, yep. right? Yep. So, <laughs> so faith is so, is so, is, is so big. Like Oprah says with the, with the faith, the size of a mustard seed can do so much, right? Yeah. Where did your faith come from? 
I, I talk about this in my book. Um, I was a little girl and I had an experience with God. God showed me what my life was actually going to look like, that even within the turmoil that I was facing when I was four or five years old, that it wasn't always going to look like that. And I've always held on to that word. And, you know, not to get all deep or anything like that. Good but deep, I'm, good a deep. Person, I'm a person who knows that um, all it really takes is for you to tap in. Now, I do mm -hmm. talk about ways and how you can do that. One of the things that I try to practice on a daily basis, if I can, I'm not, I'm human, so I'm, I'm yeah. just times, you know, but what I try to practice on a daily basis though, Jason, is really centering myself, whether mm -hmm. that comes from just taking time in the morning or meditating, however you do it, but centering myself in understanding that God placed me to wait in this, in this position in that I literally have dominion over everything walking. I have dominion. I'm higher than. He created me like in his image. And so if God created me in his image, I have to, I have to, I have to breathe that in. I have to own that right. and just say, right. you know what, that no matter what any else, anything else looks like, I'm on this path and, and I own it. And I can call things in. I can call what I want it to be. And so basically that's what it is. Calling your life. Again, there are are different things that you can do i totally yeah. believe in writing things down you know writing everything down complete uh detail of what you want and breathing that stuff in claiming it and all of that and so um i've just kind of always had this in me it's it's you know anybody who who's known me from years and years and years ago like even as a teenager they will be able to tell you like yeah you've kind of always been like that and i speak life into people and, and literally, I've just used those uh, gems to do it for myself. And then because I've done it for myself, I can now package that and show everyone else. This is how you can do it. Yeah. You do not have to be stuck. You do not have to. I don't know what's going on. And that's OK if you don't know what's going on. But own, take ownership. Get back in the driver's seat and turn your life into what you want it to be. And, and that's pretty much the simplified version of it. But um, th that's basically where I started. And I started doing Facebook uh, live streams. Yep. And I built a tribe on Facebook Live. And I was just like, you know, talking to them on a daily basis. My people are so dope. My, my, my supporters, they are just so dope. They've been with me on this journey. And they've watched my journey. And they can, they can attest to my belief system. And then when everyone purchased the book, that book got so much love, my very first one, yeah. um, they began to share their testimonies of how it was working for them as well. So I'm like, you know what? This is really a real thing. This is really real. So it's, it's been a blessing. It really has been. Well, but so with that said though, so you, this life experience brought you to this moment where you woke up one day and said, hey, I'm gonna write this book. When was the time, or when was that moment, Robin, where where the book's out, it's done, you're getting this response, where you had that that just that one moment where you thought, like, "Damn, I'm changing people's lives." Well, I can, I can, I can, I get chills when I think about it, Jason, because um, I did have doubt when I put mm -hmm. it out. I was like, "Who's gonna read this? And who's yeah. the, who is this gonna help?" But, you know, obviously I started getting, you know, reviews and people who were really like, I believe this. But the moment was when we, we got the opportunity to do the, um, the, homemade, the Homemade Simple show on the, on the OWN Network. Yeah. And they featured me as an author, which is amazing. So they put my book on the, on the show. They, they featured me as an author on the show. And when that happened, when the, when the actual show released, people from around the world started finding me and emailing me and telling me that they purchased the book. And when I knew that actual strangers were reading the book and practicing the things that I talked about, that's when I really knew. Because some of your friends, they can tell you stuff. They can be like, right. hey, girl, yes, that, that really worked for me. But, you know, it's different when you got, right. like, actual strangers and people who've never met you in other states and other countries who are saying, you know what, this actually does work. So that was the moment for me. I was like, wow, that's, that's powerful right there. And it's so powerful. And, you know, what you're speaking about, some people may interpret it as manifestation of the universe. Um, every, I mean, I believe in the law of attraction and manifestation. Yeah. But to know that everything in your life lined up to have those moments and then to put you on a path to keep going and keep spreading that gospel. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. absolutely incredible because I, what I tell people is that no matter what, every single thing that you do is a piece of the puzzle that's going to help you. It's going yeah. to add to the bigger picture. So that's one of those things for me. Uh, I'm, I'm here now as just because of the, the, I, the, the thought 
to even do Facebook live streams. I'm here because the thought of, you know, me putting out a book and, and the actual um, dedication to write the book, you know, yeah. I'm here because of that. And so all right. of those things add up to this bigger picture. And now here I am where people say things like, you know, you're, you are an inspiration and you encourage yeah. people. And I'm like, really? Wow, that's so dope. Like, <laughs> you know, it's just amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. It is awesome. It is awesome. You're a jack of all trades, though. Um, you have this professional life. You're a mother to twins. Yeah. Um, and uh, you you also are able to connect with women um, across the world and men as well. But the Jasmine brand, lots of females love the Jasmine brand. It's it's and I think it's funny because I read the Jasmine brand too. <laughs> and and no matter no matter any way you cut it. Black culture needs sites and needs a presence now more than ever. Writing yes. for the Jasmine brand, your experience, fulfilling, fun, of course, right? Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. Like, it's, it, it is very fulfilling. It's challenging. I love that they challenge me as a writer. Um, thought, I thought I was an actual writer before. No, babe, no, no. <laughs> Get your stuff together, and it don't go like that. So <laughs> they, they challenge me to, to step it up because we are, what the Jasmine brand really is about is presenting to us, but not just presenting to us on just some like little lame level. It's right. about, no, this is actual journalism. This is actual mm -hmm. news and, and bringing it what people actually do care about. We find out right. all of our information and news and black culture and entertainment. We find out about those things on social media. So um, it's an honor really to be able to write those stories that people, that's how, I mean, this is, if you notice this, Jason, we, social media, if you're talking about the Jasmine brand and, and other blogs, we put the news out sometimes before you get the little alert on CNN or For Yahoo. Sure. Or, Absolutely. You know, so it's, a, it's an honor to really be a part of that and bringing, you know, our culture, the news. So yeah, it's definitely fulfilling. And um, wow, here I am. That's kind of crazy, huh? <laughs> well, no, no, I mean, it's not, it's not crazy. It's real because you're, because you're, you're, Obviously, you're you're on the path of where you're supposed to be. You're you're in your truth. You're 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 in your purpose. And I think that so many people, Robin, myself included, we <clears throat> we're searching for that. We're trying to find yeah. our purpose for being here. Like God, whoever, like you know, give me a sign. Like what? Like you know, what? Where am I supposed to go? Lead me. Lead yeah. me. Show me the way. And and you know, sometimes you're shown the way in an inadvertent way, and sometimes you're it's sometimes as clear as day. It's it just mm -hmm. it, you know, everyone has a different story. But um, but I think it's great that you've been able to pivot and still come back and do what you love and be able to be good at so many different things. I think diversifying is such a huge deal for talent. And you know, like you you talk to people about entrepreneurship businesses growing that how important is it to really own your brand because you hear the word brand so much but like social media everyone's a brand you know honor your brand hone your brand but what goes into a brand to make it successful and authentic what do you think well first and foremost you're absolutely right about that and when you actually decide to own your brand and to say i'm i'm gonna get behind my brand that's pretty much it. It's getting to getting behind your brand and it's committing to what your brand is about. And it's not it's not swaying one way or the other. It's actually figuring out what is your thing, what is your niche. Right. You know, I, you got a vibe going on over there, Jason. I love it. I, oh, you, you should have just gone ahead and invited me over. Here. <laughs> God, it was it was getting hot outside. I was like, nah, I can't do the sun anymore. But but um, thank you, thank you. It's, there's an echo in here. I apologize. But so oh, no owning problem. your owning the brand, right? Because I mean, I think uh, people don't really know how to arrive at a brand and you don't want to be, you don't want to be inauthentic. You don't want to be false. You don't want to be a fraud for, <laughs> for lack yeah. of a better word. But, yeah. but your book talks about these nuggets mm -hmm. uh, for a rising entrepreneur. And what I think a lot of talent doesn't understand is that this, you are a business. Your yeah. talent is the product that you're selling of your business. So it's really about just being authentic with your brand and what else? Yeah. And, and also, uh, I just saw a meme, and I, I'm going to probably misquote it, but to paraphrase, it basically says there's no, there's no such thing as oversaturation when God is in it. So basically, a lot of people, um, here's the thing, what I believe, that no matter what, go for the thing that speaks to you. Don't yeah. try to hop on, because that, a brand is not going to work if you are inauthentic, like you said. Right. A brand is not going to work if you're just trying to get the money you're trying to go after what you think is hot right now. That's not going to work. People are going to see through that. But if something actually speaks to you, 
That's how your brand, that's where it starts. That's the very foundation of it. What is your brand? Who are you? What is true for you? Then when you stick to that and you, and you lead with that, uh, you know, you literally, you can't lose. Even if that market that you're in or even if that brand, so to speak, is oversaturated, if you lead with that and that's your truth, that, that speaks volumes. But really just basically sticking to that, sticking to uh, owning that, you know, and, and honing your brand, like you said before. That meme you brought up, um, I saw something similar that says that even if the, even if the market's saturated, God will make a way or God will make a space or something yeah, like that. And, yeah. look, and here's the thing about, you know, oversaturation and what we're seeing is that it's, if someone's checking for you, if they're looking for you, if they want you, they, they don't give a damn if there's a million other people doing it. If they want exactly. you, you're coming to the front of the line. Yep. But, and so, I, so leaning on what you said about finding what you're passionate about and making sure that, that it goes with your why. Why do you do something? Why, yeah. why, why, do you, why are you passionate about journalism? Why are you passionate about fashion or pop culture or whatever people are passionate about these days mm -hmm. you know it's about mm -hmm. figuring out your why at least that's what i've come to realize because how many times robin you know we've been in this industry for a while how many times have you taken a job and you're like let me do this because i need a check because it could possibly right it could possibly lead somewhere and then it doesn't and you feel like why did i do that and then you get exactly. mad at yourself because you question your own values Absolutely. It happens so, I mean, I think for, for us and maybe even a lot more other industries that happens so often and you're like, mm -hmm. listen, I, 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 I hate the fact that I succumb to, you know, doing this because mm -hmm. of a check or because of the look or whatever, right. because let's, let's be the real. Luck. Sometimes it's a look. Sometimes it's a look. You know what I'm saying? Boom. <laughs> yes. So yes. It really is. It really is. It, it's a good look. Um, and, and, but I'll be honest with you, quite the, on the controversy, sometimes the look is okay. You right. have to decide within yourself. Right. You got to decide. That's the discernment that you got to right. really decide. Why am I doing this? Like you said, yeah, you yeah. I mean? <laughs> the look, yeah, I'm <laughs> I know like where, where you're like, Ooh, this would be a, gr a good look. And then you get behind the velvet rope and you thought, and you think, <laughs> but you know it's okay look you part of the puzzle right it's part of the part puzzle of the yeah book. part of the puzzle yep. so right you you've written you've written these books or you wrote these books you have appeared on oh let me wait you you've appeared on so many cool so many cool places your mom you're busy what's next for you where where, where does robin ayers see herself going you host for you've you you do so much what is, and I, and I hate to ask a question about things being definitive because I feel like in life, the only thing that's definitive is taxes and death. <laughs> but, yes. but career wise, career wise, like where, where do you see yourself going and what, what, what feels good to your soul or what would feel good to your soul? Well, Jason, I've always said that I want to show. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to show. Um, for some reason, I think that that is television. I'm not sure it, what that looks like, if it's a big network or if it's, you know, live streamed. I don't know what that looks like. But then, then something occurred to me. Brandy, Brandy Norwood, I have yes. to shout her out and tell her thank you. Because B -Rocka. She is one of the Yeah, B. Rocker, she is one of the first people who actually truly wholeheartedly when I when I was first getting started, she believed she was like, mm -hmm. you gonna have your own show. Like, let me tell you something. We would always go like wherever we were, if there was like a, a photographer who wanted to capture her, she would grab my hand and she'd be like, come on. And I'm like, no, 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 they want you. And she's like, no, you gonna have your own show one day. You need to be in this. That's so <laughs> cool. And so she would, she would speak that into me. She would, like time and time again, she just kept, kept speaking that. And what was interesting is when I started the podcast, um, it was actually in April. I, I had my very first episode in April. And w once I got a couple of episodes under my belt, I was like, this is my show. Yeah. This is a show. Right. I mean, it doesn't. And, and then I started doing the video part of it. It was first initially audio and I started to do video. And I was like, you know, what? here I am. This is actually a show and I'm owning it and I'm doing what I want with it and having the guests that I want and talking about the topics that I like, you know, yeah. um, so so this is great for me right now. I love the podcast. I did take some time off of it initially because of uh, everything that was going on in the wake of the killing, obviously, of George Floyd and, mm -hmm. you know, everything that has uh, arisen because of that. It's just been 
I, I felt like there was no way that I can do my podcast because that was just the least important thing that right. was on my radar. So I'm I took sorry. some time off. Um, I actually have my very first episode coming back this Wednesday uh, with a, a very special guest, C uh, Sienna Linda. So I'm ex excited about that. But outside of that, though, Jason, I'm continue. I I'm definitely writing on another book. I'm excited about that. And uh, I do s still see a show for me in the future somewhere. I yeah. do still see that. I see that as well. And I, I love your Brandy interview. I mean, you interviewed her twice. I mean, and twice, what, yeah. um, six years to the day. Is yes, where, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Which, is, which is so cool. Um, shout out to Brandy and Sonia and Willie and the whole Norwood family. They're amazing yep, people. Ray Day. Ray Day yeah, yep. everyone's super dope. Black women in entertainment. You know, I talked to Amber Riley, and she has this new in initiative called a Mutiny, which is ending black silence in Hollywood. And people like Amanda Seals and Gabrielle Union and um, Tamara Mowry, and people are speaking about speaking out about just the, the the treatment of blackness in Hollywood. Where do you think we go next uh, as far as equality? What do you think? Because as someone who works in the business, and, like, and again, we, we all have different, we all have similar but different experiences in the business. Mm -hmm. For yourself, what do you think is around the corner? I really do believe that this is a, we've turned a new leaf. Yeah. I want to believe that wholeheartedly. Um, mm -hmm. And I do believe that. I believe that change is here. And now more than ever, I'm, I'm watching in front of me the camaraderie that Black people yeah. have. And, I, and we've never really experienced anything like this before. I feel like I got so, uh, like, a shadow on me. Is there a you don't, No, you're fine. It's you fine? Look, okay. you, look, you look good, girl. You look good. I'm making sure you can see the light. I, I, can see, I, can, I can see the melon and it's popping. <laughs> 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 uh, but, yes, I, I definitely, I see it. And, again, I believe it. So I'm loving the fact that... Um, Right now, there's a lot of talk about uh, black women being the, the least protected, the least right. covered, the least, you know, um, the least cared for. And a lot of women, a lot of black women, we care for our black men so much, you know, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm now starting to see that conversation open up a little bit more. And because of this solidarity that we have, I truly believe that we have turned a new leaf and that we're going to start treating ourselves different, start treating right. our people differently. Um, being more accepting of, of each other. And um, even within, within this industry, because this is a tough industry, you already yeah. know, um, to crack open and to really have each other's back. But I'm seeing that open up a little bit more as well. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, this is what I'm seeing in my personal, with my own you know, uh, mm -hmm. eyes, mm -hmm. but I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that this is uh, the, the start of a new day where uh, things will change with that. Yeah, I agree as well. And, and you know, and you, you hit the nail on the head with with loving ourselves in our in our own community, especially entertainment, because it's so competitive. It's such yeah. a crabs in a bucket situation. Whereas, ooh, if Robin books this, then that means that I'm less than because I didn't get that job. No, boo, that was right. just Robin's yes. That doesn't yeah. mean that that doesn't mean that wasn't your no. That was just after all the no's she's had, that was her yes, you know? Absolutely. And, and, and I, I'm, I'm seeing that as well, but I just feel like it needs to happen on a deeper level because we still have instances where we're not, 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 not us collectively here, but just, you know, in the business where we're not supporting each other at all. Right. But I'm seeing it with black men, other, bl other black talents in the business, like just yeah. no kind of brotherhood at all yeah. and and then you know you add layers of lgbtq plus or or anything else that may be that may be marginalized and you you had to hold the conversation so i'm hoping a, a leaf has been been turned because until we heal from the inside out yeah. we can't we can't expect other people to heal outside of our community yeah. and see us and it's it, it's sad it's the truth though but um this business is toxic as fuck. And I don't mean it to cuss, is. but it, it's straight yeah. up. I mean, it, like it is. And there's so much bad behavior, bad behavior that is celebrated, that is awarded and that is reinforced to the point of, I get why, look, Tamar Braxton, for instance, recently, mm -hmm. we like, you know, yeah. re reportedly, allegedly suicide attempt is what they're reporting at the blast and other outlets, yeah. right? You know, no one knows. Um, the family hasn't given a statement. Tamar hasn't given a statement. But I can imagine if you just strip away suicide, mm -hmm. allegedly, mm -hmm. how she, what would, this industry would drive you to self-medicate. This industry will drive you to overeat. This industry will drive you to be a sex addict. This industry will drive you to spin, spin irresponsibly. It has that effect. And like, but yeah, it's just perpetuated. Yeah. 
there's this yeah. crazy narrative that's out there that, like you said, I mean, we haven't healed from. And I'm, I don't know, what I would really be interested to do is uh, to study the narrative, study right. the narrative and where this came from, that there's not enough for it for everybody, that, right. you know, you being chosen means a no for me and that you're better than me. Mm -hmm. You know, where did that come from? Where, right. where, why can't we celebrate each other? But like you said, touching on the industry and how it can literally drive people to go insane and crazy and self-medicate and all of these things. I've known people would be surprised at how many people that I've actually known before they made it big. Yeah. Kanye being one of them. I knew mm -hmm. Kanye when Kanye was just a producer. And not to say just a producer like that because he was very, very talented and yeah. very successful as a right. producer. But I mean, before he was a rapper. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, there, there are tons of people that I knew who were sort of regular people yeah. who when they became big, things changed. Things change because that's what this industry can do. And it's and I don't know where it begins. I don't know what the what that actual what, how to pinpoint sanity, how to pinpoint uh, camaraderie. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. I really do hope and I, I pray that we're on the 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 brink of something different. Um, but you know, there's still a long, a very long way to go, and we both experience it. You know, yeah. in our own in our own journeys, there's just a long way to go. So a long way to go. And the, your question was, you don't know when, like the 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 light flip switched, right? Mm -hmm. When people go from you, like you said, Kanye was a producer before he was Kanye West, the yeah. act, the artist, the musician. Yeah. I, you know, I think I think people and talking to people who are hyper successful and hearing their stories, it's always the years of grinding it out and the abuse you take and the sacrifices and the mental anguish before you finally make it. Mm -hmm. But by then, you're so emotionally traumatized i guess that that and of course the public doesn't see that because mm -hmm. you know you're taught to you're you're taught to to gloss it over with a, with with a great exterior straight mm -hmm. teeth all these things yeah and um but why when you finally get there you're so damaged that you don't there's no there's no there's no coming back from that so you just continue yeah. Well, you know, it's you a, I think it's a combination too, Jason. Like it could be a lot of that, you know, what they experienced in their beginning years, but then also the fact that now we're in this whole media, this this over sensationalized uh, genre of media mm -hmm. where everybody has something to say. You cannot right. escape it. It's on every page. As soon as you open your phone, it's hitting you in the face. We're getting alerts about these celebrities. Like they can't escape it, mm -hmm. and. Um, I think partially that might be a part, a part, a part of it. I mean, yeah. it's really this, this, this whole, everything is just sensationalized, you right. know? And so, um, I, again, I don't know. I'm not, I really hope to, I want to be successful and I don't want the, uh, the, I don't want what comes along with that, right. that super fame. You right. know, I don't want what comes along with that. I, I want to be successful and I want to practice the, the things that I love. And a lot of that happens to be in entertainment, but mm -hmm. I do not want to, and I do not wish to become anything a part of, uh, to have to experience anything that they do. Right, like Beyonce, I think, you know, people get on Beyonce, myself included. Beyonce is so fiercely private, protectively private, yeah. right? Yeah. But you never hear, but there's a reason for that. And you never yeah. hear about Beyonce having any kind of drama beyond her sister kicking Jay-Z's ass in the elevator. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. for real. And, and, so, yeah. and so, and so, that's because I think that, that you, there's no shade of gray. It's black and white. Either you're going to completely just be about the work and shut out the world, yeah. or you're going to be about that life. And I sound so stupid about that life, but you're going to be about that life and entertainment and, and take all that it comes with it. And sometimes people aren't, don't realize they're not mentally equipped to mm. handle like i know if i was super famous oh my gosh i would be the most private person ever because yeah. like we're on social media daily even doing the show daily i do the show daily on social media mm -hmm. i find myself on instagram hating it so i'm like why well, i need to detach from this you know like i yeah. need to like i need to exit stage Ooh, left you, quickly you speaking. you speaking right there yeah quickly right quickly but you but you also realize that this is my passion. This is what I love. And I, and in order for me to continue doing this, I have to be, I have to accept these necessary evils, you know? So yeah. it's just like, you, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. But I think the conversation of mental health really, I'm glad that it's bigger and it's more normalized than it was before, especially in the black community. I mean, Kanye West over the weekend, 
at his at his, I'm, at his presidential rally because that's what it was. People are like, yep. it was a presidential rally. Yeah, it was. Um, him being as vocal about what he said, there is emotion behind what Kanye was saying. You don't have to agree with what Kanye was right. saying, but it was coming from a place that was very raw, visceral, and yeah. present for him. And and so and so and of course he's been open about his struggles with mental health. Yeah. So I think Kanye and Mariah and all these people who have who have come out and said, "Hey, I'm bipolar," or "I'm or I suffer from manic depression," or or any or anxiety, any of those things. I think it's normalizing it in the black community because for for Thank years, yeah, black men especially. Man, you know, a black man's not depressed. What? Yeah. Yeah. A black man doesn't feel like, no, you got to take care of your family. You got to be hyper masculine. You got to be yeah. all these things. And it's like, whoa, bro. Nah, nah, sis. Yeah. Th- that, that's, that's, not, that's not what's happening, you know? Right, right. And I'm, I'm so, I'm grateful for that because it, it has become a little bit more normalized, not even fully accepted, but a little bit more normalized. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I'm all about that because why would we be exempt? You know, why, why are black people exempt from, you know, experiencing these things? We shouldn't have to be, we should still be able to go to therapy and be taken yes. care of. And you know what I'm saying? That's where you get yeah. fixed and, 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 you know, I hate to say fixed cause that's not necessarily, you know, what's, what's happening there. But, um, you should be able to go and get therapy and counseling and then be able to go back home and still be considered normal and still be, right. able, to, be, still be able to be considered black. You right. see what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, yes right. seriously, because right. people, because what, what they would tell you is when we were growing up, that's not, that's not black, that's what white people do. Right. That's yes. what they told us. Mm-hmm. So how come we can't go to therapy and still be considered black? Right. So, so you have a lot of people who are damaged, a lot of people who are um, hurting Mm-hmm. who refuse right. to Help. accept the fact that it could be mental mental issues. Mm-hmm. You know, they have not gotten diagnosed. They they refuse to get help and go seek uh, professional attention. And it's it's all for the sake of people saying, when we were growing up, you better seek Jesus. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's, it's, it's really unfortunate. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm blessed because I have my own, some of my own family members who are dealing with mental health issues. And I'm like, listen, you need to go and seek professional help. And that yeah. is okay. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's, it's the dehumanization of a person when you say things like, when, when, when the culture yeah. has said things like, that's what white people do, or let Jesus fix it, or give yeah. it to Jesus. And it's like, okay, well, I have been feeling this way for, like myself, I'm a survivor of clinical depression. I was depressed. I've been dep- I was depressed from seven years old to 21. Wow. And I, and I didn't get, and I didn't, and I didn't, I mean, I was clinically depressed from 21 to 24. And so I didn't get help until I was 25. Mm. Right. So yeah. I, I, so I get it 100% about, you know, not knowing what, what, not, not the stigma behind yeah. mental health. But I think again, with Kanye and just so many celebrities that have come out and it being the, it being more normalized, I think we're on the right path to having it being even more. Yeah. normalize so yeah I it's, I'm, I'm here for i'm here for go robin before i let you go because i know you you're busy you're busy I, j- when when you when you think about a feeling do you think about happiness or do you think about joy which one mean which one resonates more with you i think about joy joy to me is uh happiness is a moment that's not a that's not a state of being joy to me is a state of being joy to me is is peace it's uh being content um with life that doesn't mean that i don't want to achieve more or uh you know anything like that it just means that i'm okay and i i'm i'm grateful about the moment uh something that i'll never i'll take with me forever is when uh russell simmons he said um gratefulness begets more things to be grateful for yeah and it doesn't mean necessarily anything material it just means whatever whatever it is that you could be grateful for being grateful for what you already have means that uh, it will get you more things to be grateful for. So to me, that's joy. And so, yeah, that's the, the feeling that, uh, that I kind of identify with. I love it. I love it. We ha- so you have Unspoken Language, 2016's first novel, available on Amazon. The RA Report, also available on Amazon. Yeah. Text, sex, and checks on yes. Instagram, the podcast. <laughs> and we can catch your Jasmine, the Jasmine Brand videos from you on your social and also on the Jasmine Brand social as well. Yeah. Yes. 
Yep, right. yep, absolutely. And, and YouTube and anywhere else, you know, we just out there. <laughs> out, we are out here yes, getting out it here. done. Robin Ayers, it has been a pleasure to have you on my show. I'm so glad you can come by. Thank you for yes. having me. You're absolutely. So amazing. Hey, game peeps, game girls. See, I'm grateful for you. That's why we're grateful together. Oh, we manifested it. <laughs> hey, I love that. I love that. <laughs> All right, Boo. Hey, listen, you take care. Stay safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, thank you, Jason. Bye. Bye, babe. Mwah.